Rose Hill's husband, Gil, and Rose, they make and they sell these pom-pom blanket looms. Now, look what I've done to it. This is so light. It's so super light. Now, I've already showed you that you can make bows on these pegs. Well, look at this. <laughs> look. This is absolutely fantastic. I am loom knitting. I need, I have plastic looms. If you look back on some of my other tutorials, you'll see that I've got quite a few pl different sized round plastic looms. And I needed one that had a bigger, wider gauge on it so that I could use my super chunky wool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. Now, I know you're saying, or you might think, look at those big ladders. Once you've done your loom knitting on a wide gauge one, what you've got to do with it is you've got to pull it into, into a nice shape. And look what it comes out like. Those ladders disappear. Look at that. They disappear and you get this lovely knitting. Almost like a knitting. Now I'm rubbish at knitting with knitting needles. But I love doing this. So the first thing is I'm going to show you a little trick that I use. Now if I take, if I get my wool. Sometimes if you're working with a ball of wool, it's worthwhile going into the middle and pulling out the middle. But I can't find it on this one. So what I'm going to show you is a great way to do weaving or winding your wool on when you're using peg looms is get, on the, in get the outside of an old pen. Make sure it's clean. Now, it's going to be really difficult to get that thick wool down through there, but I've found an easy way to do it. I've got myself a needle and thread. I've got a needle and thread. So I'm going to pop the needle right down through there so it comes out of the other end. Carefully put it down there. I can pull it back just a little bit. So I'm going to tie my wool, I'll zoom in. So I'm going to tie my wool and my thread together like this. I can get that end. Just tie it nice and secure. Now the wool's really soft, so it will squish down through into that that pen. Just tie it nice and secure. So I'm going to drop the needle down through the large end of the pen, and it will come out this side. Now just gently pull it. Look at that. Ta da There we are. Now I'll just cut that a little bit off. You can just cut the thread if you want. It's up to you. Put that somewhere safe so I don't lose it. So there we go. Now what we can do is we can wind the wool on much, much easier. I found also what you maybe need to do is you maybe need to put a little plaster across here because when I was working and my thumb was resting against the pegs a lot, I've ended up with just a little bit of a blister here. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to start this off. I'll adjust the camera so you can see it. I'll just show you a little bit on a certain amount of pegs because if you're going to do all the pegs, it's the same way to start it. And I'm not going to take this off. I'm going to leave that down there. It won't make any difference to me showing you how to get your wool on the peg. So make yourself a slip knot. And then just put it over your peg like that. Now I'm going to keep it up here because it works just fine up here. It doesn't pop off. It'll keep it out of the way of mother knitting. 
You're going to need a little tool like this as well. You can use a bent nail or a crochet hook, anything that's going to get you in there. And you might think there's no way to get it in, there's no groove. You don't need a groove, I'm going to show you in a minute. So, with your wool in your straw, this helps with the tension as well. Just wind around, go around the back, wind around the peg, go around the back, around the peg, around the back, and around the peg. Now, to come back the way, what you're going to do is you're going to go back around the peg like this at the back, around the front, around the back, around the front, around the back, and around the front. Now, all you need to do is get your hook in there into that bottom stitch and bring it up over the top one. Move to the next one, up and over. Now, do you see how I think it will still work with nails? I think you'll still get your wool over your nail. You can give it a try. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Now, we're going to work our way back. So we go around the peg. You can leave it and not knit that one. It's up to you. Around the peg to the back. So go around the front of the peg to the back. And then go around the front to the back. Around the front to the back. Around to the front to the back. And around the front to the back. And just sit that down there. Now again, just take your stitch from the bottom up over the top. I'll put my hand behind there. Now I'm sorry that you can't really see because of the colour but it's the colour I want you to work with. So just bring your bottom stitch up over the top, the bottom stitch up over the top. It might be a bit fiddly to start with but once you get it going it'll be fine. And then around the front of the peg and behind the other one. Around the front, behind the back, around and around. And this is just called an E-wrap stitch. So take the bottom peg, the bottom stitch, sorry, up over the top, the bottom stitch over the top. Now, what I'm going to show you is as well, now that we've got it to start to work in. If you can't get your tool in behind there, let me fix that a little bit. If you can't get your tool in behind that stitch, just take the ladders and then just bring it out just a little bit and off to the side so you can see. I'm going to zoom in just a little shade, especially if you've got nails on your loom if it's a nail one just take your knitting and then that lets you get that hook in just behind the peg there you don't need a groove you, if you've got a groove in or you want to put grooves in them it's fine but you don't need it and once you get the hang of this it's absolutely brilliant so around the front of the peg to the back around the back around the peg, around the back, around the peg and around the back, just like that. And again, your bottom stitch over the top, your bottom stitch over the top, just catch your knitting with your hand if you're struggling. And that will, because the wool is quite loose here, that little loop's going to go quite large, if you see. So it will hopefully go over the top of a nail if you've got a nail loom. So if you've got a little bit fed up with doing your pom-pom blankets and your non-pom-pom blankets, you can just give this a little try. It's something different. It's another way of using your loom to your advantage. You can just use a few of your pegs if you want. I would do, if you're going to do a scarf or something, I would use maybe about 10 pegs. So when it comes off and it'll, it'll go in, you can see it's starting to go in already. It'll shrink in. So if you're going to make a scarf, use double the amount of pegs. I would use maybe about 10 pegs. 
play around with it and you'll see what it does. And it actually, it's brilliant. I know you've got, you're going to see it's got big ladders here. It won't. They'll go away like it did here. Like it's done here. Look at that. You can see it much better now. It's zoomed in. Even though it's got big ladders here, once your knitting starts to go down, it'll, stretch, it'll shrink in and it'll go like proper knitting. That's brilliant. Now, I'm going to zoom back out for a few minutes. Around the end peg, I'll go a bit slower. Once you get the hang of this, it'll be quite quick. It's only because I'm showing you what to do. So around the top peg to the back, around the back of the peg and around the front, back of the peg and around the front, back of the peg and around the front, and you just keep going around the back or what's going to be the inside of your loom. If you keep bringing your wool to the front, your knitting is going to fall down the front part of it and just get in the way of your turning. That way it keeps it, that way it keeps it in the middle. I'll zoom out again. So again, it's just stitch up and over and you'll see what I mean by about pulling this back piece just slightly. Up and over your pegs. Just twist your frame around a little bit. It goes really, really easy. Get that one. That's the one with the knot on it. Oops, it is. If it comes off, just give it a twist. Or you can unwind it. It's up to you. Just give your wool a twist and put it back on. So we'll just get that one. This one's got the knot on it, so I just need to be a little bit careful. Up and over. Twist it around. Stitches up and over. Up and over. That's it back on. And away we go. Away we go again. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. So it's really, really easy to do this. You just wind around. It's only looking a little bit difficult because I'm trying to work my way around the camera. And up and over. Up and over. And like I said, if you find it difficult getting your hook or a crochet hook, or even just a, a little bent nail, anything that's this shape, like that. You can buy these on eBay and Amazon. They're called loom knitting hooks, but you can do it with a nail or something, anything that's just bent, even an old knitting needle. If you've got a really thin set of knitting needles and they're metal, then just bend the end of the knitting needle to that shape. Now you don't need a groove or anything. So just if you use your actual knitting itself and hold it up and that gets you down behind that stitch. Up and over. Really easy. You'll get the odd one that's maybe just a little bit. I think I've just caught that the wrong way. There we go. Once you get it in right. Once you've had a go of this and got it running, it's fine. Look at that. So just keep twisting your frame round. So you just keep knitting around, knit around to the end. And once you get to the end, just work your way back around and then that way and then back. Now, if you're unsure of what I was doing, go and watch one of the other tutorials I've got on with peg loom knitting, where I knit a scarf and a hat and that sort of thing, because it's the same principle. It's the same thing. 
So there you go. Even if you've got nails, give it a try. And I'd love it if somebody gave it a try on the nail one. And I think I might actually do it myself and put in the comments whether it works with the nails. I think it will. I think it'll work with the nail one as well. So give it a try. So there you go, Rose and Gil. There is an, another little use for your looms. And, and I love it. I will not, as long as this, I've got this, I will not use a nail loom again. Because I think this peg loom is absolutely fantastic. So here is my knitting. I'm going to lift that up just a little bit so you can see. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Now, remember I told you not to worry about how wide the pegs were and you had this big ladder effect. Look what happens when it knits down. It pulls itself in. Now, it will be slightly smaller than it is on the frame. It will come in a little bit, but not by much. It will only come in maybe by about six inches or so. But this is quite, going to be quite big. And as you can see, look how wide it is. It's going to be really, really wide anyway. Wide enough to put on a pram or a cot. You can always add a fringe to the bottom. Now what we need to do now is we need to cast off. And we need to do it really slack. So that you don't have, it's not tight on the top and tight on the bottom. So wind a wool around this peg now. I'm going to knit that one. Keep your stitch nice and loose. Knit the second one. There we go. Take your second stitch over your top stitch. And I think we'll just take that off up and over. And then knit that stitch. This way it's giving you a nice, a nice loose edge here. Now take that off and move it along to the empty peg. So again, we're going to knit this one, wrap it around this peg. And this peg. So we're going to knit that stitch up and over, knit this one up and over, take this one off nice and loose, put it over there, knit that one over and then I'm going to knit it again and move it over one. That just keeps it the same loose edge as this one. Oops, my stitch is falling off. So we've got to the corner. It's just the same thing. Just treat the corners the same way. That's the end of my wool. There we go. You don't really need your straw in this one. So we're going to wind around this peg, around the front of it, and around the back of that one. Knit that stitch up and over. Knit this one nice and loose, up and over. Take this stitch and pop it onto here. Take the bottom one up over the top and then take that stitch back to there. Now you can slow the tutorial down if you get a little bit stuck. Just slow it down. So again, around that one. And around this one, we're going to knit this stitch, keep it nice and loose, and knit this one, keep it all really, really loose, nice big stitches. Take that one off, put it onto there, knit it over, and then knit the stitch again. We'll take the stitch off and put it on the empty peg and just start it all again. So around that one and around that one. 
we're going to knit this one knit this one now this is the way i do it you might know a different way but this is the way i'm doing it take that one off and that keeps this edge it keeps this edge all nice and loose and that is the main thing so it's like we're knitting an extra stitch in here over here just to keep that gap just the same as it is on the bottom so up and over with that one take the stitch off and move it over there we are and i'm going to continue that all the way around to take my blanket off the loom so i'll show you that again look at that look how beautiful it is look how beautiful it's turned out and it's really really soft i love it I'll be making more like this with this. Now, this peg loom is intended to make pom pom blankets, but I'm just showing you that you can do, you can, you can do other things with it. You can loom knit on it. So I'll get that off the frame and I'll come back and show you what it's like. So I've only got these three stitches left. So around that one and around that one. I'm going to knit that stitch, knit this stitch, take this one off, move it over here, take that stitch over the top and then bring that one over to there and I'll do the same for the last two, wind it around, knit that one, keep your stitches loose, knit that one, take that one off, we'll just knit it over. Now what we'll do is we'll cut the wool. And that's all I've got left is that little bit. I can keep that and it will help me to do some fringes. And I'm just going to feed this end of the wool through that last stitch and pull it. Now I'm going to move the frame away out of the way. We'll zoom up a little bit. There we go. And look at that. Woohoo! And there is our knitted blanket. Now what I need to do is just gather in the ends and gather in this end and give it a pull. Just give it a little pull. And what it's going to do, it's going to pull all those stitches in nice together, like that. So just give it a pull, and there we go. There is our reverse. There we are. That is our knitted blanket. Look how big that came out. Look how wide it came out. It came out really wide. And it's come out really quite long and it's a lovely, lovely size. It just needs some fringes on the end if you want the fringes on the end. Or you can crochet it. Now I did make one mistake here. Right at the very beginning I didn't wind my wool around a peg. But I can just tuck that in there and I'll tie that in. And it'll be fine, you won't even notice it. So just make sure that when you wind it, you wind every peg. Now, it's not bad for the first try on a pom-pom loom, is it? Now, again, what I will say is this loom is for making pom-pom blankets. I'll leave the link to Rose and Gill's selling page in the top part of the comments on this. I'll, I'll put it as a pinned post on the top comments, the link where you can buy these. Now they do do ones with nails if you're interested in making pom pom blankets. And it's just to show you what else you can do with these. And if you pull your stitch up and right over, you'll be able to use your nail looms as well. So just put them to some extra use and you can turn out some beautiful little blankets like this that's the reverse of it 
Even the reverse is very pretty as well. That's the reverse. And that is the right way. That's it the right way around. And there's the reverse of it. And that's that. And I love it. I think it's turned out absolutely. I love it. I think it's turned out absolutely fantastic. And you can see the lens. So that is a good width and a good lens to put in a cot or a pram or just a little snuggle blanket for for your little kiddies. There's no big parts in it. There's no pom-poms to come out. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. Look at that on a pom-pom loom board that's made for pom-pom blankets. So there you go, ladies and gents. There's another little extra thing that you can do. I just want to say once again, Thank you very much to Rose and Gil for my loom because I love it. I love that loom. I love the extra things you can do with it as well. So thank you all very much for watching. Please subscribe. Leave a comment in the comments box. If you get stuck anywhere with this, just go back in my channel and have a look at how to do loom knitting on a peg loom. It's the same principle. It's the same principle. And you come up with beautiful things like this. So there we are. A little challenge to some of the ladies that are in my craft group, Crafty Twints, on Facebook. Get your looms out if you're not doing anything on it. And I challenge you to make yourself a little loom blanket. They're absolutely brilliant. So once again, thank you all very much for watching. Please subscribe. It is free to subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate everybody watching my channel and all those 30,000 people who have subscribed already. I think it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is fantastic. Great moral support for myself just to keep on doing tutorials and showing you some different crafts to give a try. Now my edge turned out really well, just that last little bit quickly there. The edge turned out really really well with doing it that way I did it, where it gave it that little extra stitch in the middle so it didn't pull it too tight. And there we go. So until the next time, happy crafting. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.